Hello everybody, thank you once again for joining me for another video here in Magic the Gathering, the arena. My name is Justice, my handle is Arcantuna, I'm a free-to-play player, and as a free-to-play player right now, the uh, we're in this weird zone where there's a new set coming out in about seven weeks or so, roughly, and I want to start saving up my gold uh, in hopes to build up to a decent amount of gold so that I can keep doing the weekly events in this game and then also have plenty of gold to buy a lot of cards when they come out. So I tend to play around a little bit in this these next few weeks. So what I'm going to be going through today is a life gain deck. This deck's a lot of fun. In theory, now, Mono White is, like, pretty popular. And I can't help but think Mono White life gain should stand an equal chance of being successful. So let's take a look at the deck tech. Um, the deck list, rather. I've got four of Johnny's Welcome. And they do stack, so whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life, and it's a one cost. A lot of one cost in this deck, and I think that's kind of important. There's also a lot of removal, so I'm kind of on the fence with how this is going to play out, but we're about to find out. I am running three charges. I don't I don't see a problem with charge. It's sort of like, um, like a one-shot Radiant Destiny, but, you know, goes away. It's sort of like a one-shot... Unbreakable formation, sort of, except they don't get indestructible. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna play with it. I think it's, for one man, I think it's got some value. But we could find out why it doesn't get used all that often here <laughs> in, in the playtest. We'll see. Running four Hasda Marshals, it's a one casting one one, and when it attacks with two other creatures, it creates a one one soldier creature token with Life Link. Um, I am not running. Uh, Legion's Landing in this deck, which is interesting of me. I just noticed that. But I want to see how this plays out, because everything, all the one-casting creatures have a lifelink ability. So even Haas the Marshal, though he doesn't have lifelink, the token does when you attack with him. So that, there might be more value in Legion's Landing, though it is uh, legendary. Not sure. Four Healer's Hawks, so one-casting, one, one flying, lifelink, good old birdie. He's a good bird. He always comes home. Four Hunted Witnesses. Uh, at the start, it's just a 1-1, one, one, but when it dies, it creates that 1-1 one, one token with lifelink. So I like that part. Uh, Leonid Vanguard. Good old 1-1 one, one for 1. Again, they're all 1-1s one, for 1, right? But at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control three or more creatures, which there's a lot of creature synergy here, uh, Leonid Vanguard gets plus 1, plus 1, and you gain 1 life. Now, this deck probably won't stand much of a chance against, like, one Kaya's Wrath, for example, um, which is whatever. It's part of the game, but uh, that's how it goes. Two moments of triumph. So for one, a target creature gets plus two, plus two, and you gain two life, which there's life link to pump the Ajani's Pride Mate. Two of these, or f four of these. It's a two casting two, two. Whenever you gain one life or any life, put a plus one, plus one counter on the Ajani's Pride Mate. There's a lot of life gain going on in this deck, um, which is kind of cool. So if you get a Pride Mate early, they figure to be a pretty big creature that they have to resolve. Lucky for them, there's a lot of rule right now. Um, so that's something that could happen. I thought about mixing in another color just to protect him a little bit, maybe like Azoria's life gain? But at this point, I'm just playing with mono white just to see if I can't tweak it a little bit and get it going. Two Dawns of Hope. Uh, only two because it's all I have, and it also fits kind of nicely. Whenever you gain a life, you may pay two mana of any color. If you do draw a card, it's awesome. And for four mana, you can create a token with lifelink. So it's, it's kind of cool. If you're running one creatures, you can grab one, use it as a blocker or whatever. If you've got six mana for some unknown reason... You could pay four for a creature, block, and then draw a card and hopefully draw into something. Uh, this is your only card draw engine in the deck, so, you know, it's not that great. But for Mono White, uh, Mono White doesn't have a whole lot of card draw. Maybe Replenish. Re no, Revitalize. So you could Revitalize. And Moment of Triumph... And that would also pump your Resplendent Angel. So there's some synergy here with Mono White Lifelink, which I like. So it's worth exploring, I think, especially, you know, in these kind of, like, downtimes, so to speak, between set releases and big tournaments. You know, we just had the Grand Prix. We just had the, the Twitch tournament that just came out. So I think it's kind of neat to sort of spend some downtime looking at this stuff. I've got two Resplendent Angels. I only have two. That's why there's only two in the deck. Otherwise, I think it's super strong. It's low to the ground. It's three casting, three, three with flying. And at the beginning of each end step, if you gained five or more life, creates a four, four white angel creature token with flying and vigilance. Super awesome. And for six mana, it pumps up to a five, five with lifelink. So it can it can trigger itself down the road. Just super powerful angel of resplendency. It's awesome. 
I've got an Ajani, so I threw them in the deck for four. Uh, the four casting Ajani, not the six. Um, comes out for loyalty, and for his plus one is you put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature. Uh, no, each of up to two creatures on each creature you can roll. Then his minus two ability grabs a creature from the graveyard with a converted mana cost two or less. So there's a lot of one casting in here. You can grab him again from the graveyard if you need one to come back. You can do that. Which I think is pretty powerful, although Ajani's a fat removal target, so they're going to go after him. I've got four Conclave Tribunals, four casting, Exiles is permanent until it leaves the battlefield. But it Convokes. So even though it's four casting, it's really like a, you know, whatever. If you have creatures, you can tap them to pay the cost, which is kind of nice. And two Lyra Dawnbringers, just for good measure. We're playing white, may as well. Five casting, five, five, flying, first strike, lifelink, and other angel creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and have lifelink. Super awesome. If you get Lyra and a Resplendent Angel out, and they stick to the board, the game is virtually over. That's a winning combo right here. And then 20 planes. Uh, it, even though there's like a five and a four and a four casting, and even a three, like 20 is enough for the three. But I feel confident with this because Conclave Tribunal is a Convoke anyway. So I, I'm going to go with it. And this is where um, Legion's Landing comes in handy too because if you can flip it, it becomes a land for you. And I, I spent all those wild cards on Legion's Landing, so I may as well play it. But 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 I'm on the fence with, with it. It is just a token. Uh, Johnny doesn't bring it back. So I want to play with this a little bit. And I'm just playing in regular play mode. And I want to kind of see where the weaknesses are of the deck while also doing my daily quest. That's my whole goal. And and I want to kind of play with the concepts of mono white life gain. You know, you know what I mean? Like I do this a lot where I play with the concepts of things because I, I don't know. I just feel like sometimes I might see something if I do it this way rather than rather than just copy some stuff from the internet and play that. Although that works for me too. So my opening hand, I had two Leonin Vanguards, a Dawn of Hope, and a Lyra. I like Dawn of Hope in my opening hand because I can typically cast it on turn two if they only have one. If this was an island, I'd worry about a spell pierce, but because it's not an island, I'm okay. I can cast it. This must be for one black. It's holding priority for... Uh... Gosh, I don't know what costs one black that would, would hold priority. We might find out the hard way. Or the game client's just taking its sweet time. I think it sends server commands, and that's what does it. Oh, another lifelink deck. Okay, no big surprise. That's how the, the uh, matchmaking system works, especially in uh, play mode. It'll do this to us quite a bit. Now, it's not going to trigger... Well, Dawn of Hope will trigger when my vanguards gain life. However, I can't draw. And I will attack. I want to threaten that pride mate. Without a doubt, he takes the damage. He's playing life gain also. He's doing... He's doing the Orzov style life gain, perhaps vampires, we will see. And if he's playing black, he's got enough removal for Lyra, so that's no good. She can be murdered. She can't be casted down. She can be mortified. My Dawn of Hope could be mortified. So that's not ideal. Oh, Nightmare's Thirst, or Dead Weight, or okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're going to block to trigger the token. That's what we want to have happen. He leaves his pride mate tapped, and now we can draw a card if we don't draw into something good. So, this is kind of interesting to see this happen. We're going to attack. We will pay two mana. Here we go. Into a plane. So we've got a Hosda Marshal down, and next turn we're looking at a Lyra Dawnbringer. But perhaps doing Orzov might be the better option. We will find out. He's playing Seal Away. That sucks for us. <laughs> but okay. And then we lost a Vanguard just through the normal way. And I don't want to block. No, no. Vampires. Okay, Call to the Feast. I had a feeling... So, I'm going to drop Lyra right away and see what his response to this is. No attackers. She also first strikes, so there's not a whole lot they can do. Moment of Triumph is super good on a Johnny, because he gets plus two, plus two from the Moment of Triumph, and he gets a counter from the life gain. It's also a good idea to have these Nightmares Thirsts in here. That's, that's a good idea.
Yeah, I'm gonna block. He's gonna gain the life anyway, although he won't gain life from that token, because Lyra first strikes. Maybe with any luck I can draw through some of my deck using Dawn of Hope and Lyra Dawnbringer, although Vraska's Contempt is a thing. He may even have Ravenous Chupacabras in there, which is not great. Not for two black. She can't be casted down, so I like that. Yeah, yeah, he's got to cast down the Hazda Marshal. And we are just going to attack with Lyra. I don't mind doing a little bit of a race action here because his Pride Mate will get bigger. But in theory, I should have a Pride Mate also. Planes and a healer's hawk. And he's only gaining two life a turn, whereas I'm gaining five with uh, with Lyra Dawnbringer. Well, now he's going to gain some life. Hopefully he doesn't have a token engine and can generate a whole lot of token madness. I... I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to block. I will block. Healer's hawk blocks, and we triumph the healer's hawk. We'll gain five life. We will definitely pay to mana, draw that card, no reason not to. So now it's another Lyra Dawnbringer, and we look like we're starting to get to being a little bit of business here. Yep. Okay, here we go. Do not have to fight alone. I will lend you my strength. Let's attack with Lyra. Definitely pay that too, so we've got a Johnny Pump and Lyra into a Conclave Tribunal for that Pride Mate. That's nice. I appreciate that a lot. And even if he should seal away this Lyra, I do have another one. So Dawn of Hope is very strong for card draw. She figured to be, so I, I like this concept here. I like a Johnny. Maybe maybe a Johnny's worth it, even though he's, you know, coming up on on a year old. That's not good. I will happily take four. Actually, I won't. I will not. I will block, block. Four. Yep. I'm going to block just with my token. Block the pride mate. I'm becoming irritated. Yeah. So we play the healer's hawk. Because we and we'll tap this one to play the, the convoke. Pay the convoke cost. We'll leave these two healer's hawks as blockers. We will pay three mana and a hawk. Okay, so the mana works out too. It's perfect. We grab a Johnny. We attack with Lyra. We save this healer's hawk to use as a blocker. And hopefully, not all attackers, just six, six. Yep. Swing in. Gain six life. This is insane. We're at 37. We'll tap two white, draw a card. And now we've got a charge. Hey, now we can play with, well, obviously. This is either going to go really well for us, or... Okay, so we won the game. So Charge obviously won us the game in that case. Um, it's very, very potent. Our opponent couldn't even see it, and he's like, Nope, I'm not doing this. You got a Charge? I'm out of here. Kill 15 creatures. I feel like unless you're playing Mono Red, killing creatures probably isn't going to happen. <laughs> it's pretty funny, though. It's a good daily quest to get. So, I kind of like the concepts here that we have in, in the mono white space. Ooh, we can see we can see what Resplendent Angels are going to do. Our opponent goes first, though, and I feel like if it's a mountain, we're almost instantly dead. I could be wrong about that, but I mean, I think mono red jacks us up pretty bad. Although, if we can get the pride made up enough. Gates? No, not gates. Just regular Simic, it looks like. I think I'm going to hold off on the Pride Mate for now. Because I'm not gaining life yet. So I don't have any life-gaining creatures out here. And I could do a third turn Resplendent Angel into a Lightning Strike. Lava Coil? Something like that. Mm-mm. I'm not going to play my Resplendent Angel either until turn 4 so I can charge 
that's an instant. You know, you don't have to actually charge. You could like charge defensively, I suppose, and that might be a good way to protect my my resplendent angel from like a lightning strike. I do I do want to get a Johnny going though, or a Johnny's pride mate. And if I could get get to a point where I can attack with with the three, I can generate a lifelink token. So here here we go. Let's see what our opponent does. If he's got some removal, we could be in trouble. If he's missing that removal piece, then... In either case, it is safe to play my Resplendent Angel at this point, because I have the four mana to protect him. Good stuff. I will save the Leon and Vanguard for later. So now if we eat a Lightning Strike, we can charge defensively, make the Resplendent Angel a 4-4. It's not a terrible plan. Lightning Strike. So now we'll charge into a counter spell. Spell Pierce, maybe. Shock. Who knows what. So, okay. That worked. That's freaky. <laughs> All right. I'll take it. And so now we're on for some life gain. We're going to gain one from the Vanguard. Cool. Swing in for three. Make the token. All right. And then next turn we can make Resplendent Angel of 5 So he's got to resolve all this or it's, uh, it's curtains. I wonder if he's looking for a Niv-Mizzet to make me pay for all this business. In either case, I would make the Resplendent Angel of 5-5 and then attack. And he'd have to block with Niv-Mizzet. Wilderness Wreck. Not as scary without, uh, without that stupid, you know, Nexus of Fate spell. So, let's do this. Fog, perhaps. Maybe he's going to time this perfectly. And then, lightning strike my resplendent angel in response to... You can't... You can't... Uh, lava coil, that's a sorcery. I don't know if he's opting. Looking for one. He'd kick down a revitalize. One, two, three, four color deck? I wonder if he's got black in there. So, so that's the game. Okay. Worked out pretty good. And see, this part plays out sort of like mono white aggro a little bit. I ate a couple of shocks or lightning strikes. Didn't take that damage to the face, which makes me happy. Didn't kill a single creature in that game. So this quest will be with me for a couple of days, it looks like, but that's okay. I can kind of play with some other decks and in the meantime and see where we're at with it but for the most part I like what what we got going on in the mono white space I wonder if we'll see an actual more of like a competitive deck now sometimes if you only play in the ranked games you kinda go a little batty so I like to get out of ranked games for a while and just play just old school just play some magic you know mm. I would rather have a a spell to play earlier or a creature to play earlier I don't mind having Dawn of Hope, but waiting three turns to do anything, creature-wise, is kind of risky. So, I'm going to mulligan this. There we go. There we go. I like that. Does he have a... <laughs> okay. Alright, alright. So now we can see... Maybe this is... I'm going to do a Johnny's Welcome first. Now he knows what we're doing. And with any luck, this is not a hardcore mono white aggro deck. So that could be. Mm, boy. Could be. Could, be, could, be, could be. I don't like this combo. I don't like bodyguard on the witness because you want the witness to die. I also don't like moment of triumph on the witness. Like, that's. is what it is. But I can. So if you moment of triumph on a 1 1 with lifelink, that's 5 health in a turn. So it's almost worth saving this for the turn I can play a Resplendent Angel. Ooh. Okay, so I've got to Tribunal the Marshal. He attacks. I for sure blocks. Get the token. I could charge and kill the Bodyguard, couldn't I? Why don't I do that? don't know that this game's going to last long enough for me to have a benefit of charge down the road. So, we'll see. 
We'll play it early, see if that has any kind of benefit. Got a couple tribunals. Sleep on the love seat. <laughs> Bugler. So he's looking for a Sky Marcher. That's an interesting card to have in here for, for three, so, okay. Now here's the question, do we just go ahead and take out the Bugler now? Or do we wait a turn? You know what, I'm gonna attack. This is what we'll do, I'm gonna attack. He thinks I wanna gain the life. We'll combat trick him right here. Yeah, one blocker. We'll gain five life back. And prove that we're not afraid to take some damage. Maybe. Hyromancer's Cage! It's alright. I got another Tribunal. Exile target non-land permanent. Exile target non-land permanent. So it's the same thing, it's just Tribunal um, has Convoke, that's all. No blockers, thank you. Okay, so we'll play the Pride Mate. Yep, and then we'll just go and gain a life. Oh, thank you. That's perfect. And we'll Tribunal the Marshal. Now, you could Tribunal the Cage to Tribunal, but that's just a waste of mana. So if they ever Cage your Tribunal or Tribunal your Tribunal, just let it go. Don't worry about it. Don't try and get rid of that with another Tribunal. It's just a waste of mana. I can take it back. That's just fine. Here comes... Hmm. Here doesn't come a Johnny. So, do we attack and try and create the token? Do I send one his way? I will not. I will pass the turn. I will risk taking two in the air. And that's fine. Okay, or more in the air. That's not as fine as it was a second ago. Um, we're gonna block four, because that's the most. We'll take a bunch. Ouch, ouch. Okay, so now we've got a 5-5. Five, five. And we can block this flyer for a turn. So he's playing more of a typical mono-white aggro deck here. I'll block this guy down, we'll block this guy down for one more turn. Make our pride mate a 6-6. Six, six. Get another pride mate going. So he's got a gain life to untap his paladin. He's got an Adanta, which doesn't scare me at all. Okay, and all he's got is a 3. Cool. With any luck... Okay, here we go. Gain a life, we got a 4-4 four, four, and an 8-8. Eight, eight. Cool. Now if I attack with my 9-9 nine, nine Pride Mate, I feel like that's scary enough for him. If he gains life, he could untap his Paladin. And if not, what's the crackback gonna look like? Five, three, there's no way he attacks with the marshal. So I feel pretty confident in swinging in for nine. And I feel like he wants to block this really bad. He blocks with the 100 witness, that's the right choice. Pride doesn't trample. And now he's got the life link to untap, but I think I can handle some of this stuff pretty nice. He's got more life link there too. Does he go for it? He does. We're gonna block the Vanguard. Yep. Now he's gotta pay four life to save him, and I don't think he's gaining enough life. Well, maybe he is. Vanguards would go nicely in this deck, too. And so here's an example, too, of, of Adanto. And he just made a creature token. Okay, so now I can... Well, too little too late, I think, with Donna Hope, right? Yeah. 
Even if I saved all my creatures, he still gets through for four. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off. No, he gets through for six right now. Well, okay, so that's the game. I probably should have attacked. Maybe splashing some green to give a Johnny uh, trample might do. Um, so yeah, okay, so here we go. We block here, block here. We'll block with the Hasda Marshal. He's not doing too much else. I want to save my Vanguard for some card draw. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'm at negative two. I thought for some reason I did the math wrong there. Thought I would live. So it looks like... It looks like Legion's landing might be kind of strong, but I kind of like where this mono white life gain is going. Um, and, and like I mentioned earlier, I am saving the vault. I, I do see it, but I'm 2% higher each day. So it looks like by the time the next set comes out, I might be able to hit my, my vault and still see it. In either case, I'll probably hit it and get the wild cards um, just to grab whatever is, uh, is really strong out of that set. Like in this set, I grabbed Hydra Crisis. So um, I am going to save that and just going to keep working on my daily quests until the next expansion comes out, guys. Thanks for watching. Do have yourselves a good day.